Hi everyone, my name is Rebecca, I'm a fish biologist, an ichthyologist and also a PhD student studying low card catfishes, um, also known as plecos or plecostomus within the aquarium trade or the aquarium hobby. And today I'm just going to talk about, well, keeping discus with low cards and it is a very debatable issue and it's not always the easiest to do because they are very different fishes in requirements under many different manners or aspects. So in general my recommendation is probably not the most suitable um, fishes to put together and it takes a lot of consideration to actually do it. Um, so I wouldn't entirely recommend it and you've really got to think about what you're doing. Um, it's definitely not something I'd do when you're new to either of the fishes because they do have such different requirements. I've got a spawning pair in here and at the moment I've only got the singular male in there. But these are Asians, that is a stinker. I have worked with di um, I've worked with wilds and I would like to get wilds again. I've worked with shoals, I've kept shoals. Um, I just find they're, they're easy in pairs because they do tend to pair off anyway. But anyway, so the first issue and thing that gets uh, brought up with discus and lower cards with plex, and this is the major one, and that is um, rasping on the slime coat, which I've actually never experienced with lower cards particularly. And I've kept a, and worked with a variety of species, all the way from Otocinclus, Astridium, um, uh, what would it be, Parotocinclus, Rhinotocinclus, Hyperpotoma, um, all the way up to the more hypostomne with uh, Pseudocanthicus, Scobin and Cistrus. I've also worked with uh, Pseudo Ryan Lepis, um, uh, the LO95. Um, I've got Baron Cistrus, I've got Uncistrus, I've worked with so many of Z Lor Carne. Um, so there is a lot more to it. Um, and I've never seen that behaviour. And generally, I would. So I always work on the most natural diet, the best diet, and I think if you look at a lot of what low cards are, being, are fed, and I've got so many videos on it and I've talked about it so much, is that not, or a lot of them aren't fed a natural diet or what they feed on in the wild. Um, and this can lead to likely malnutrition and starvation and they're not going to feel like um, they're not going to have their nutritional needs met and often when things aren't having their nutritional needs met they might look for other aspects or other avenues to get that nutritional requirements and therefore that's probably where rasping occurs it's not particularly like loaches or bottier type loaches where I find they can be a lot more boisterous particularly when they're on their own uh, when they're in the shoal it's a lot, um, a lot more different with their interactions with other fish um, opposed to um, if they're on their own, um, it's quite. That's another topic altogether. Loaches with uh, discus, but I think the biggest thing is actually getting the right diet for your log card, and not just going by what the packet says. If it says the packet says it's suitable for plecos, it doesn't mean it will be suitable for plecos or log cards. And you've got to think about what that individual um, species or. Uh, genera actually feed on and eat and that's the best way I think to avoid that rasping behaviour. Remember that a lot of the species you're keeping are going to be more territorial for lower cards, particularly the hypostomine and therefore they probably aren't going to appreciate a discus going right next to their cave so think about layout um, there but I'll go into that a bit later. Um, with the smaller species who are, well, I think particularly this comes to autosync because ketostomas don't even suitable temperature wise um, but a lot of species that are more algorithmic so even the barren cistrus uh, or periplanctivores um, they're going to need a lot of algae in the dirt and they're not going to get it really from just feeding off the edge of the tank um, or the glass so approaching that and thinking about how I can cater for that so Rapashi Sonic Green Super Green is great um, Rapashi Super Green has I think 80% of it is algae so that's a lot um, whereas I think Sonic Green is a little bit less and when it comes to the difference between the three, two think about which fish you're feeding and whether they're going to eat more algae or less Autosynchronous are really bad actually 
uh, being able to get the right diet and I find also uh, vinyl autosynclus, so epili, epili um, they really struggle on most captive diets and they're really prone to bloat I found particularly there and then citrus as well um, particularly the converse of nose they're ones that feed well but they really bad at bloat so get the diet right is the main thing if you want to avoid that behaviour and that's the same for anything large this behaviour is not normal Law cards are not fish eaters you can check um, there's uh, as far as I'm like I've been researching a lot about their diets, I've read through a lot of papers, and none of them really seem to consume fish, or I've not actually seen fish mentioned as part of their diet. Um, so it's not a natural behaviour. It doesn't really make sense to be a natural behaviour. I understand there's the manatee with teoplicthes in Florida, but that's a total different thing altogether. Uh, manatee aren't going to react. If a uh, lower card attaches to a discus, the discus is going to panic. And in the sense of the low card, it means that it's going to probably get seen by predators more if you've got this thing flashing around and it's on um, attached to it. It's not very easy to rasp on or sit on. It's not something that you're going to get a good meal easily with conserving as much energy as possible because these fishes don't want to waste energy getting food most likely, apart from maybe scoping and citrus and pseudocanthicus when they're breaking into like mollusks and invertebrates. But it doesn't really make sense. It's a very energy expensive food. It's not natural. So it's not a normal behaviour that they're going to go towards because it's risky and it's not really worth it for them. Many of them don't eat fish or would never eat fish. They're not really found around fish like that. So that is the biggest thing. And I would say it's more of a myth created by poor care because it's not entirely a myth of um, poor care creates behaviours like that. One thing that probably will actually narrow down the lower cards you keep particularly is discus as far as we know come from warmer temperatures. There is potential records of like uh, the Peruvian species which is um, it also goes into Brazil but the uh, Symphysodon tarsa which is the green uh, the green spots and then it also I think oh, I always forget the name of the river but it does go as far as that which I think is Brazil, um, they c could potentially be found in cooler waters, um, but the majority, you think about 28 degrees or above, so that does limit what lower cards you can keep. Generally for digestion, longevi longevity, physiological health, for both fishes, not just the discus, but also your lower cards. Um, so getting there required. So when it comes to deciding on what species of lower card you to mix, you do want those higher temperatures. So I think Rio Zinga is the easiest. Um, so that's so Rio Zingu is definitely higher temperatures of the Rio Orinoco. But looking at places like Planet Catfish is a quick way to look up temperatures of different species, avoiding um, a lot of like Ketostoma, potentially quite a few different uh, Panaclus, pa uh, pe Pecoltia, Pecoltia, um, and also think it ancestrous, some are found at higher temperatures, some are found very low hill stream sort of habitat, so they're not going to be mixing um, so well discus, so making sure you've got that temperature match. Another aspect of uh, discus, which kind of matches with the first topic, is what are you going to feed your discus? A lot of people go for beef heart, and I say if you're going to feed beef heart, don't keep them with lower cards. Beef heart, well, there are kind of as lower cards, they don't feed on fish, so that's make it even more distant uh, what they feed on compared to beef heart because they're going to be feeding mostly on the birds, but which composition is very difficult. They find it very, they're not going to be able to process the lipids, the fats, a lot of it very well. It's going to be very, very low in phosphorus, and it's likely going to need to bloat in the lower cows, no matter what they are. So, and the main worry is, when it comes that is any residues left around that they're going to maybe feed on, could potentially lead to a disaster. If you're going to feed beef heart, I really wouldn't. Discus don't need to be fed on beef heart, and it's a complete myth, I've got a video about it, on what discus do eat in the wild. They are detritivores, mostly feed on algae, detritus, 
Detritus, I think, is largely referring to plant matter detritus and very little invertebrates. So you can feed them on a variety of foods that would match with most of Laurel Cara's in a way, particularly thinking about um, maybe the more generalist ones. But the algaes would make it good. Their diet would be very similar to a lot of other, a lot of Laurel Cara's, um, such as Baron Cistrus and Cistrus, um, Hemian Cistrus, uh, even like Picultus, Hypencistrus would be great because they're all going to feed on very similar actual diets. And that, but if you want to keep beef heart with, um, like feed the discus beef heart, I wouldn't keep lower cards with them just because of the risk of bloat. And it just, it, even Scobin and Cistrus and Pseudocanthicus and Lipocanthicus, they're not going to be able to process those and it's not really great for them to have anywhere near their diet and discus are messy when they're eating beef heart. Um, it gets everywhere, it's going to get lost in the substrate, the lower cards are going to feed them and it's likely to lead to bloat. So best avoided, there's plenty of dry feeds you can use, um, frozen feeds, I understand it is quite difficult to get discus to eat a variety. The best diets are something like Rapashi or Nature Kind if you can get them to feed on that. Um, this just can be a right old nightmare though. Uh, Tetra has a great range. Uh, frozen food is just and freeze dried. But getting them to eat that variation will bring out the best colours, especially algae, particularly, bring out the red colourations in a lot of fishes. Uh, um, exanthins, I think, and well, carotenoids in general are the sort of pigments that will enhance coloration. So the next thing is layout of the tank. If you want the two to get to keep the two together, you have to remember that lower cards do come from range of habitats. Most come from somewhere of a, a particular level of flow, which with discus, they come from kind of lower flow. But when you look at their habitats, they're very deep water, um, and they do come from a lot lower flow which does make it, you're almost keeping a split tank. Discus can manage with higher flow water, but not that high flow. Mine, um, like with power heads and stuff, they have no issues, which is great. But I would also recommend if you're going to do that, or it'd be ideal to do that, actually to have a refuge, so have space where they're not going to have high flow and they can... Um, avoid that high flow but also areas which are going to have high flow high oxygen turnover particularly for those lower cards and maybe placing the caves towards that end so you're going to get that um sort of surface turnover as well and that's probably the most difficult thing to manage because that's the bit that's contrasting that is very difficult to keep the two together um regarding but that's how I manage it so uh, power heads or um, air stones internal filters and don't think about flow entirely of what you can see a lot of it you're not going to be able to see um, so think about where your filters are laid out and where the current's gonna move you can I guess um, if you have a little bit of sediment in the water level and um, water column you'll be able to see where and how the flow and current is moving. But that is the, probably the most important thing when it comes to mixing the two together. Uh, also, discus do want that swimming space. So you want pretend that sort of loads of refuges, loads of caves, crevices for the lower currents. Um, if you're going for sand, a sand dwelling species, which could, there's quite a lot that do come from maybe a bit more sluggish current areas which would match a lot better than what I've got. Um, but if you've got those sand waves, species, loads of deep, or just a few centimetres of sand for them to sort of dig into and hide. So there are quite a few that would work. I would say actually even like, um, if you, the warmer species of um, like Picoltia. So thinking about that current and looking for species of lower flow, I may uh, that prefer lower flow, and I think when it comes to that, 
hyperpetone might be your best choice because a lot of them seem to come from more sort of areas with a lot more um, leaf litter, submerged um, branches, stuff like that. So they might work better than a lot of the larger laurel cards people are keeping. Um, so really doing your research and that's really the best thing for success. I've they're, they're not, discus are funny fish in the way that they're not as easy or as difficult. They're very particular on how they're going to feed, um, temperature drops, temperature swings, but log cards can be as well. So it's almost splitting your tank in two. And if it comes to it, maybe not keeping one or the other. There's plenty of other many beautiful um, catfishes that will work with discus in a more of like a biotope setup. There's, pl there's plenty of cichlids that would work with laurel cards in a, a more of a biotope setup. But generally, I'll say actually, with laurel cards, they are really slow to uh, feed. So the cichlid side is a lot more limited of what would be ideal to keep them like uh, retrocle Retroculus, Zinguensis and Laptifer they're not too bad because they're a little bit slower feeding Dwarf Cichlids they want that slower comp but then you've got the sort of um so it is something you really have to research a lot more about and it's not something that you can I would go straight into especially if you're very new to both if you're new to Laurel Cards, I say definitely don't because they are very different to a lot of other fishes. They're very sort of niche. So, and they're not particularly hardy. They don't have a great mo uh, captive uh, mortality. It is particularly high. Um, and they are very um, specialised in what they feed on, their setups. They do struggle at low flow. If you don't have a great current, they won't, they're not particularly great at gasping at service. Some are, or they are meant to be facultative air breathers, and I think that's more particularly like uh, Tereoplichthys, where they're not adapted, well they're adapted more for more sluggish environments, rather than these ones, which have no need to be, um, to be air breathing. They come from very high flow, uh, rapids, um, very sort of harsh environments in a way. But I hope this helps if you're thinking about it because it's more food for thought, food for research um, and why I have them together I guess. I wouldn't recommend it. It's a lot of work. I have to consider multiple things like discus don't do well be it the temperatures being dropped particularly as well as lower cards. If I drop the temperatures much then they're going to completely spook and panic and not do well at all. Therefore, I have to do more water changes. Discus do best of a lot of water change. Lower cards do as well. Lower cards can, I think, handle that drop a lot better. Discus are slow feeders. Lower cards are slow feeders. Discus are so slow that lower cards will get to their food sometimes because they just look at it with disdain. But they're both great fish. They're both fascinating biologically, behaviourally. Um, they're very personable fish, both of them. Like, I can say that they're pet fish uh, more than the platy. So the platys are great to watch and a few of the other things I've got. But they do limit, both limit your stocking massively. So consider that if you want a diverse setup. Discus and log cards aren't great for that sort of thing because they are so niche in their evolution. Especially if you want... Like a lot of people will say, I want this individual oil cards, then that will limit your choices even further. Anyway, thank you for watching. If you like my videos, please comment, like and subscribe. And I'm happy for video ideas as long as I can do them. Sometimes I just need extra footage. Um, like I've got an eel video, but I've still got it. Um, if I've deleted it, but it's just trying to get footage that makes it a bit more interesting than watching, listen to me talking about eels and convergent evolution with another sort of sample species. Anyway, thank you for watching.